Since 1994, the Challenge Athletes Foundation has helped more than 26,000 people with physical challenges get access to sports. Today, we're going to be hearing the story of an inspirational athlete. His name is Brad Snyder. I'm so excited to chat with him. Brad, uh, first of all, good morning to you and thank you for being with us. Good morning, Jenny, and good morning, San Diego. Thanks for having me. You have such an amazing story that I want you to share with all of San Diego. It's just one of those things where um, it really puts things into perspective. Uh, can you please tell us your background? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I uh, spent about seven years in the Navy back between 2006 and 2013, during which time I was an explosive ordnance disposal officer, which is a bit of a mouthful, but that's a fancy way of saying I was a part of the bomb squad. Okay. Uh, I spent uh, one tour in Iraq and one tour in Afghanistan and unfortunately, my tour in Afghanistan ended when I stepped on an improvised explosive device that thankfully I was able to walk away from. But unfortunately, as a result, I lost the use of my vision. Um, shortly after I got back to the U.S., I was introduced to uh, sports as a function of my rehab, a way to, for me to pick up the pieces and march forward. And it was, a, it was an incredible opportunity for, re, for me to redefine myself. And I've actually competed in now three Paralympics, the London Games in 2012, the Rio Games in 2016, and the most recent Tokyo Games in 2021, um, and have had a lot of success representing Team USA. You're being humble. Let's, how many medals here? Am I correct? Six gold medals and two silver medals? Six gold, two silver, yep. Uh, oh. Two in London, three in Rio, three golds in Rio, and then uh, most recently won the triathlon. Uh, I switched sports from swimming over to triathlon in Tokyo. So it's been a, it's been a cool journey. Brad, what was your experience with sports and swimming prior to this incident? Were you a big swimmer beforehand? I was, yeah. I grew up in the water. My family's beach people. We're from the other coast. We're from Florida. Yeah. Um, I grew up basically in the waves, uh, started competitively swimming when I was 11, uh, had dreamed of being an Olympian for a long time, but then sort of plateaued prior to college, but had the opportunity to go to the U.S. Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland, Swam four years, Division One there. Uh, my senior year, I was the captain of our team and was probably the most formative experience for me, you know, as a man, but also as a leader, uh, being on that team. Uh, I hung up my Speedo in 2006 and didn't mm. think I was coming back to sports until 2012. Uh, and then being able to stand on that podium representing my country was a really pinnacle experience for me. Brad, I have to ask, you know, sometimes when things happen to us in life, we, some of us tend to feel sorry for ourselves and we kind of bemoan in the fact that why did this go wrong? Why did this happen? I want to ask mm -hmm. about your mental state um, after you went through this explosion. You know, you lost both eyes. I believe you shattered an eardrum as well. What, what were you feeling after that? You're, for a, for a little while, you're very confused. Uh, you know, I was, like you said, I was blind for a while. Actually, in the hospital, I was so kind of doped up on painkillers, I didn't really completely understand what was going on with my vision for a matter of weeks. Um, and I couldn't hear out of one ear for a while, and you're, you're very isolated. But bit by bit, you start to piece things together. My vision's gone. It's not coming back. And you're right. There's, there's a few moments where you sort of have to wrestle with that. And you can go down one of two paths. You can start to feel sorry for yourself and think about all the things that you'll never be able to do, all the things I'll never be able to see. Uh, the Coronado Bridge or, um, you know, the beautiful uh, cityscape of San Diego and things like that, which I've seen before and I think are beautiful, but I'll, I'll never be able to see them again. But I, I remember thinking, it doesn't do me a whole lot of good. You know, thinking about all the things I'll never be able to do prevents me from being able to do the things I still can do. Uh, I'm a big advocate of the Stoic principle of control what you can control and let go what you can't. Uh, and moreover, what helped me put things into perspective back when I was in the hospital was, uh, I've lost friends on the battlefield. Uh, I have, and I know we all have connections to somebody who lost their lives in the war on terror, either in Iraq, Afghanistan, or elsewhere. Um, I'm, and my best friend Tyler didn't come back. And I thought it would be very selfish of me to, to kind of uh, adopt a woe is me or a pity attitude about my injury when I was still alive. And I still have a lot of opportunity in front of me. And I want to focus on that opportunity rather than the things that I've lost. And I feel like I owe it to my friend Tyler. Uh, to seize the day and make the most of every moment. You really, um, it's so inspirational. You really put things into perspective because I think day to day, sometimes, you know, I'm already thinking, oh, I don't want to go to the gym today. I don't want to do this. Such trivial things that we yeah. 
you know, harp on and look at what you're doing. You know, it, you're not limited. You just are, have a different way of doing things. And I went on your website, you know, and I saw that your mission is to empower the pursuit of happiness, to pursue excellence. Mm -hmm. And and you said it's not the end result, but it's the, the process, right? Right. Yeah, I, you, you hit the nail on the head. I think, you know, I do the same thing every day. Every day I get up at 5.30 and I say, I'd rather hit the snooze button. I'm warm, <laughs> I'm cozy in my bed. I'd rather just stay here. Uh, but you you face that decision. No, I, I'm going to get up because I want to get my workout in. And then I want to get into my my daily job. I want to get a, get on top of my email inbox and all that stuff that we've got to do that is not going to get done unless you, yeah. you know, bear down and do it. And we face that choice a thousand times a day. Do you want to make the most of this moment or do you want to sit back and just let it happen? And I, I I feel like I've been able to kind of habituate the idea that I want to get out there and I want to achieve something big and I'm not going to be able to do it by just sitting here. Um, but I face the same choice a thousand times a day. Um, and I think that that's what, um, that's what I mean by empowering the pursuit of happiness. I want to influence people to go out there and push themselves, to hustle, to, to get things done, to push yourself to run a 5K or a marathon or do a triathlon or go surfing or whatever it is, because I've done those things and I'm far happier. I'm, I'm far more content. I'm far more fulfilled when I'm out there seizing the day, watching the sunrise or whatever it else that I'm doing. Uh, because it's far better than hitting the snooze button and staying in bed. And uh, that's what I mean by empowering the pursuit of happiness. I want to inspire people to push themselves to do things that they didn't think they were capable of. Brad Snyder, such a pleasure to talk with you. You are a motivation. Six gold medals, two silver medals. Thank you for spending time with us this morning. We unfortunately have to wrap, but thank you again. You are such a pleasure to speak with. Thanks, Jenny, and thanks, San Diego.